Okay, I was asked about the single pole contactor. Now, if you note on this one, it is a single pole. Uh, if I push this down, compressor starts. But this part, this part here, has uh, uh, makes continuity. But this is has continuity all the time. So. If I wanted to run a crankcase heater in one of these things, and this one actually came out with a crankcase heater, it's not there anymore, but uh, and I've got something to simulate it. But the crankcase heater is wired across these two contacts right here. Now it's a 240 volt uh, heater and it will not be on when the unit's running. When a unit is not running, it will feed through the windings of the compressor and start the crankcase heater. So, here's my happy crankcase heater, which just happens to be a light bulb, and I'm going to turn it, screw it down so it's on. So now that light bulb is on. I'm going to manually push in this contactor. Now, what happened? Okay, the crankcase heater de-energized when the compressor came on because it's now on one side of the line. Okay, the way it is right now, it's feeding through the windings of the compressor and it's running. Let's see if we can get all these things in together. Now here I am manually pushing in the contactor and it shuts it off. Once I turn the contactor off, it comes back on. I'm going to do a little wiring diagram of that too, uh, so you can see it in that way. But remember, this is the crankcase heater is wired across these terminals. Okay. Okay, here's a simplified diagram of the uh, wiring to wire that crankcase heater. Now, if you notice the two the two vertical lines are the 240 volt lines coming in. Uh, the contactor is a single pole contactor. Those are the contacts there. And if they close, they go to the compressor and start the compressor. Okay. If you look at that crankcase heater, now it's wired across those open switches. So power will go from the 240 on the left through the crankcase heater, through the windings in the compressor, and back to the other side of 240. Now, if it's a small heater, it'll do that. It won't try to start the compressor or anything like that because it doesn't let enough power through. There's only a small amount that comes through. So what is happening here is it's just kind of a bypass circuit. So when the contactor closes, then the electricity is going to go the easiest way, and that is through the contacts. All right, so it's not going to go through the crankcase heater, although there's a tiny little bit goes through it, but it shuts it off because we prefer the crankcase heater to be off when a compressor is running. There's no need to heat the compressor once it's running. Now, one of the things I wanted to uh, talk to you about was if you replace this contactor and you put a double pole contactor in there, you need to bypass the one uh, set of contacts. Otherwise, the crankcase heater won't work because there will be in uh, 240 volt lines on both sides, there's going to be open contacts so it doesn't go anyplace. So if you do that, if you do replace that, then you should be thinking, let's, if I use a double pull contactor, I'll put a jumper across or something like that. I have seen compressors fail because this was done. Uh, it's an older, you know, it's on older units, but uh, the newer units don't seem to have too much trouble because most of them don't have crankcase heaters. But this is the way the crankcase heater is wired when you're using a single pole contactor. Hope this helps.